Imagine having a tool at your fingertips that allowed you to calm yourself and quiet negative thoughts. All of us have struggled with reoccurring beliefs, thoughts, anxieties, triggers that just keep looping in our head and wondered, how in the world do I stop this? Today, we're talking about a technique known as tapping or EFT, emotional freedom techniques. We're going to discuss that technique, something you can do with your fingertips that might just free you or at least alleviate some of the stress and anxiety that's plaguing you. Hey, my name is Shaleen Johnson and welcome to The Shaleen Show. Okay, first I have to give you a little bit of the backstory. I had the incredible, the wonderful Gala Darling on my show, I think about a year ago. At that time, I knew nothing about EFT. I knew nothing about tapping. What I did know is that I followed this like beautiful, wonderful, incredible pink creature on Instagram who I thought probably lived in Australia. We did a, a Zoom together and I think I was on her podcast first and then I had her on mine. All I know is that on that podcast, me assuming she's across the globe, some other place on the planet, we realize, I'm, I'm like, where do you live? And she's like, she starts describing, I'm like, dude, what? You've gotta be my neighbor. And she's like, what? And I'm like, wait a second, do you live in Dana Point? And she's like, yeah, we literally live walking distance from each other. It's crazy. Speaking of walking distance, now we can walk together. We work out at the same gym. This incredible woman is um, one of those people who I think has been given a special gift from God. You and I and one of my best friends, Jen Delvo, who's been on the show before, We spent some time with Gala this weekend. Today, we're gonna explore this technique. We're gonna explore tapping. And if you're open to it, if your heart is open, if your mind is open, if you're willing to explore the possibilities that you have the ability, you yourself have the ability to alleviate some of the stress and anxiety that you're feeling today, if you're willing to have an open heart and an open mind, I think you're gonna love this episode. So what is EFT and what uh, what is tapping? Well, basically they're kind of the same thing. EFT tapping is grounded in the principles of energy psychology. The idea is that by tapping certain meridians on the body, very specific meridians with your two fingers in a specific pattern that it disrupts the neurology of the brain in such a way that allows your brain to process things in a way that otherwise it was stuck. This is just my own personal analogy. I haven't read this anywhere, so please forgive me if if this doesn't work for you. This works for me. You know a record, When for those of you who are old enough to know what a record looks like and a needle on a record, sometimes for some of us, we grew up in an era where like, if you had a scratch in the record, it would just keep skipping and skipping and skipping and playing like the same lyric over and over and over again. And that's what it feels like for me anyways. When I have a negative belief like about myself or some, like just something I can't stop thinking about it, I can't stop looping, it feels like there's a scratch in the record. And it feels like that needle just keeps getting stuck in the same spot. And for many of us, like that's what's happening in our brain. And we need some kind of a pattern disrupt, something or someone, some force outside of ourselves that moves the needle over that little scratch so that we can continue to hear the rest of the track. So the rest of the track can process. And that's kind of the basic principles of EFT or tapping. Because you're tapping on different parts, different meridians in the body. We actually don't know a lot about the neurology behind it. We know what it does. We don't necessarily know a lot about why it happens because the brain is so freaking fascinating. But EFT tapping affects the amygdala. So the area of our brain that we usually think through these things, when we're tapping with two fingers on these different meridians, For whatever reason, it allows our brain to, I don't know if it's like focus or unfocus, whatever it takes to process or to move past that looping thought. So it's it's a way of almost like disrupting the energy that otherwise is holding us stuck in this pattern. And that for a lot of us, when it comes to anxiety, that's what's happening. You're you're holding on to this thought and you just keep thinking about it and it just keeps playing over and over and over again and we start like affirming these thoughts and believing these thoughts and then looking for evidence to support these negative thoughts. EFT tapping by tapping those different meridians which we're gonna go through in just a moment disrupts that and at the same time what you'll, and I'm gonna walk you through what this process looks like so you can do it yourself today. Like you're, you're gonna go through EFT tapping and you're actually going to see myself and my girlfriend, Jen, who was just here. 
you're going to see us go through this experience with Gala Darling, who is, by the way, the queen of tapping. With tapping, you're repeating an affirmation, right? So you're, you're acknowledging and accepting something about yourself. You're readily acknowledging, okay, this is what I'm experiencing. This is what I'm feeling. And I forgive myself for feeling these things. I'm acknowledging that I feel these things. And then at the same time, I'm affirming myself and affirming these positive beliefs. And at the same time that you're repeating these affirmations, you're going through and tapping these different meridians on the body. And there's something about these specific meridians that really balances the energy system. Now, listen, as I said, I, I'm not the expert, but I can tell you it's made a profound difference for millions of people. Now, listen, before I go much further, I, I do want to just say, like, from my own personal belief, I want you to do what works for you. If you've gone to therapy and you've found therapist after therapist after therapist and you just, you're still struggling, what would be the harm in trying one other technique? And and maybe you've never done that. Like, maybe you've You've never gone to a therapist. Maybe you consider going to a therapist. Maybe you should consider talking to a spiritual leader. Maybe you should consider prayer. Maybe you should consider ayahuasca. Like, I don't know what it is you need to consider, but if you're struggling, I want you to know this. There is a solution out there. And I don't think that what works for one person is absolutely going to work for you. But I do want you to keep trying because you deserve to live a life that's happy and free. I want you to have freedom. I want you to experience joy and love and happiness. And maybe you've tried other things and they didn't work. And maybe tapping is going to be the solution for you. I just think that there's so many different modes of healing. And there isn't like one mode of healing that works for all people. There isn't one therapist that can heal all people. There isn't one form of you know, tapping or meditation or prayer or or something that just heals the whole world. If that were the case, like everyone would be better, but they're not, right? Let me start by briefly walking you through what it looks like. With tapping, the first thing you want to identify is a specific issue or emotion that is triggering for you. So let's say it's something that's upcoming or or maybe it's a feeling that you have. For my girlfriend, Jen, she is a breast cancer survivor. So she got breast cancer in 2021. Get this. Her husband in, I believe it was 2010, was diagnosed with a glioblastoma, brain cancer. He was given 18 months to live. He's had three brain surgeries. In that time, she became the, the savior of the home. Like, like she became responsible for everybody in the family, including her husband's caregiver in many regards, while at the same time expecting that she was going to lose him within 18 months. That's what they told her. And then he outlives the diagnosis. Why? Because doctors aren't gods. You know, they're just humans. They don't always have all the answers. Don't worry about statistics. Jen, on the other hand, became the person who took on all the worry, took on all of the stress, took on all of the anxiety for the family. Like It felt like everything rested on her shoulders. So not only was she responsible financially and emotionally and all of those things, but also she was constantly thinking about the fact that if my kids lose their father, it's me. So therefore, I can't do anything wrong. Like I, I remember I invited her on a snowboarding trip and she was like, I can't snowboard. I'm like, why? And she's like, if I hit my head, if I if I get hurt, who do my children have? So can you imagine living your life feeling like you're in a bubble? And then in 2021, she gets a breast cancer diagnosis. So you can imagine what that did to her. And and I'm going to share this story with you because I she's given me her permission to do so. I'm speaking on Jen's behalf. She's thinking to herself, okay, so if I'm doing everything right, I'm eating right, I'm, I'm exercising, and then I get breast cancer, like I have to try to control my environment to a greater extent. So then she starts really focusing on her nutrition and toxins to such a point that it really became almost, um, well, orthorexic. And if you're not familiar with that term, orthorexia is when you become so consumed with being healthy that it gets to an unhealthy stage, which I myself have experienced. So, and as I always say, like once you have had an addiction, you can see other people's addiction. We've been friends since high school. So, you know, spending some time with her this summer, I'm like, girl, I don't know if you know this, but you're completely consumed right now with being healthy. Like 
toxins and food and everything started to become scary and and just the fear of falling, fear of getting hurt, fear, like anxiety around like controlling her whole world. She recently came to Southern California to spend the weekend with myself and my girlfriend, Mindy, whose husband also passed away of cancer. It was great for them to bond, but it was also an opportunity for her to uh, like really look at the anxiety and the stress and the triggers and acknowledge that all of that worry was pointless. I reached out to Gala, who, like I said, lives down the street. And I'm like, hey, any chance you would do a personal EFT, you know, tapping session with my girlfriend, Jen? And she said, yeah, absolutely, I would, Shaleen. And although she doesn't normally do one-on-ones, she said, come over right now. For maybe the best thing I can do, so maybe the best thing I can do, with all this horrific health stuff, with all this horrific health stuff, is let it be the start of the rest of my life. And let it be the start of the rest of my life. It is allow it to open me up. Is allow it to open me up in a way I've never been open before. In a way I've never been open before. So I can experience as much as possible. So I can experience as much as possible. And maybe I'll die when I'm 95. And maybe I'll die when I'm 95. Full of experiences. Full of experiences. Enjoy. Now, by the way, like here's her house. Everything is pink. Everything is fabulous. She's like a real life pink Barbie come to life. I mean, like, and you know, like there's some people you look at them on social media and you're like, oh, they're so using a filter. I'm telling you, this is what she looks like in real life. She's like a Barbie. Like it's insane. A Barbie from another planet, (laughs) a tapping planet. Anyways, her house is pink and mirrored and sparkly and girly and yummy. And she's just such a great, intuitive um, unicorn. That's all that I can say. And we sat down and of course we wore pink and purple because that's, you know, honoring Gala. And she did this tapping session for my girlfriend, Jen. I'll let Jen tell you a little bit about what that did for her. Before my session began, my anxiety level was through the roof. It was a 10. During the session, it brought up a lot of emotions and different feelings, but by the end, I felt so much calmer and at peace, like my shoulders just dropped. And at the end, she was like, make sure you drink plenty of water and don't be surprised if you're feeling a little sick or a little nauseous, maybe fatigued. And I thought, okay, but that won't happen to me. I was so drained and was really emotional that day. I feel like I was just processing a lot of emotions. The experience was amazing. I cannot wait to do my next session. Let me know if you have any questions on my experience. By the way, I do a Patreon. It's a very personal podcast. Sometimes it's really freaking funny and sometimes it's just really freaking personal. And with my two girlfriends here this weekend, it was really super personal. I would love to invite you to become a Patreon member. I release an episode every single week. It's audio only. It's only five bucks. I would love to invite you to hear that conversation conversation between myself, my girlfriend, Jen, my girlfriend, Mindy. It was really interesting. Like we talked about sex and dating again. And what does that look like after a certain age? And what does that mean to be a widow? And like, it was so deep and so profound and the, and so vulnerable. And sometimes the episodes are really funny. And sometimes they're like really embarrassing. But if you love that kind of stuff, or, and if you enjoy my channel, and you want a little bit more of the personal stuff, I invite you to become a Patreon member. And you can find that link below in our show description. But what you start with is a specific emotion. So Jen started with the fact that like, I feel like I can't control everything. And I'm so worried about my family. I'm so worried constantly. I'm filled with anxiety and fear. I have so much fear, fear that I'm going to die, fear that I'm going to abandon my family, fear that I'm going to let people down, fear that anything could happen. Typically with EFT or tapping, you'll then rate that feeling or that issue or that emotion that you're struggling with on a scale of one to 10. And the reason why you might want to rate that on a scale of one to 10 is because you want to assess how you feel after the session. You want to assess how that intensity comes down as you continue to practice tapping on a daily basis. By the way, I will link to Gala's Instagram. She's got a a, a, a tapping series that you can watch every single morning if you'd like and assess for yourself how it helps you, which I think you'll find it will. It might, what do you have to lose? 
once you've identified that emotion or that that feeling that you have, then typically what you'll want to do is create kind of an acknowledging statement. For example, you might say, um, even though I feel anxious right now, I deeply and completely accept myself and know that I'm doing my best. Like that is an, a statement like, okay, here's what I feel and I'm acknowledging that it's true, but I'm also acknowledging that I'm doing my best. And then you go through a series of affirming statements as you tap the following areas. So the areas include the top of your head. Now, some people do both fingers at the same time. I, I'm not the expert, but it would seem to me based on EFT, based on EMDR, based on the right, left sides of the brain, that the one, two, one, two, one, two, like going left, right, left, right, left, right, will make a difference in the way that your brain is responding. So the first thing you do is take two fingers. So it could be your index and middle finger on each hand, right? Those two fingers on the right, those two fingers on the left, and you're tapping the sequence at the top of your head. That's the first meridian point. The second meridian point is right at the beginning of your eyebrow. So you know where your eyebrows start? So it's just tapping right at the beginning, right at where, like almost like at the bridge, not at the bridge of your nose, but like where your nose or where your eyebrows come together and you're just tapping there. And then not at the temples, but right at the um, outside edge of your eyebrows. That's the second place. And again, you're making a statement for each one of these, as you'll see in the example that I'll share with you. And then the next place is right under your eyes. Again, right on that like occipital bone, right under your eyes. And from there, you're going to go right under your nose. Now for that one, you're probably gonna take your, lead, you know, like if you're right-handed, you'll take your right hand and you're just tapping maybe your index finger right under your nose. From under your nose, and you're repeating the affirming statement, from under your nose, then you go right under your chin. So it's like under your lip and just before you're at the bottom of your chin. So that like, you know, right where you would have like a little dimple in your chin if you had one. And so you're tapping there, okay? And from there, you're going to go to your collarbones. Again, so you're, you're, these are very specific meridian points. So you're going to go to your collarbones. You can probably hear my earrings clinking. So I'm going right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. And I'm repeating that affirming statement. The pace that you go at is up to you. I asked Jen, I said, Jen, when I was listening to you doing your affirmations, I felt like you're talking really fast. And she's, for me anyways, my brain process is slower. So like, I think I would need to, tap a little slower or at least speak a little slower but that's the thing it's it's such a personal um, application like how you do that so from the collarbones then we're going to take either your right arm or your left arm doesn't matter and you're going to tap under your armpit like so if you look at if you're feeling under your armpit and you were to walk your fingertips down like maybe i don't know three inches like if you're a woman like right where your bra strap would be and that, again, it's just one hand now. You're tapping two fingers right in that spot under your armpit, a couple inches down from your armpit on the bra line. You're tapping there, okay? And then the last place you're going to tap is the wrist together. So now I'm just tapping my wrist together. And again, I'm just repeating the same affirmations. And I, I shouldn't say the same affirmation. I'm moving forward through these affirmations. There's no right or wrong way to do it. Um, some people their affirmations, they they speak them out loud. I think that's very powerful. Some people are not comfortable at first speaking their affirmations, so they might think them. And what you want to do is after you finish the series, which you go through that as many times as you want. Like I've heard people who have tapped for like 30 minutes. Sometimes people tap for 10 minutes. Sometimes people tap for 15 minutes. The tapping series that we did with Gala was about, I think, about eight or nine minutes maybe. And we just repeated that process until the intensity started to decrease significantly for Jen. Now the way the tapping works, and there's been a ton of research on this, which I will link below in our show description, is, and they don't exactly know what's happening, but it sends a calming message to the amygdala. The brain begins to process certain emotions. It unskips that spot in the record so that your brain can process, can continue to move forward. Now, it's not immediately that you're going to have like all of your stress removed and all of your emotions and all of your anxiety gone, but it reduces it. In studies where they've tested cortisol levels, people who do tapping, they see a dramatic reduction in cortisol levels. 
And if nothing else, it creates a deep state of relaxation. I can tell you, I was certainly relaxed after our session. Gala told Jen, my girlfriend Jen, she said, um, drink a ton of water and don't be surprised because of the feelings that Jen expressed having after the session. She was like, I feel so free right now. I feel so light. I feel like a weight has been lifted. And Gala said, um, okay, just be aware that you're, that's a major energy shift. Maybe you're emotional or maybe you're cranky later today. Like it's a, it's an energy shift. I get back on the car with my girlfriend, Jen. She's like, that was great. But like, I mean, I'm fine. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm totally fine. We got home and it was like, did someone give her a sleeping pill? I mean, it was mid morning. She was like, I'm so tired. I'm like, really? And she's like, this is the kind of girl who will never not go to the gym. And I'm like, well, I'm, let's go to the gym. And she's like, I can't. Something is going on. Like, I'm, I can't keep my eyes open. And she like literally went upstairs and had like the deepest sleep of her life. And she said she had the craziest dreams. And for millions of people, tapping is an effective self-help tool that alleviates stress, anxiety, and looping negative thoughts. So whether it's acute anxiety or chronic anxiety, performance anxiety, or, or just something in general that's triggering you, why not give tapping a try? Again, it's not to say that like this is going to be the thing that works for you. Maybe it's a combination of things. Maybe it's tapping and therapy and prayer and, and walking and meditation. Most of all, I want you to know you're not alone. And there's no shame in what it is you're experiencing. You're a human being. You have feelings. But I want you to know you have the ability, you have the potential because you are this dedicated to getting better. You will get better. It might only be 1% tomorrow, but you're going to be better. I know it. And you can experience a life that's filled with joy and happiness and freedom from anxiety, freedom from worry. Worry doesn't do us any good. It doesn't change anything. It just robs us from today. And you deserve today. You deserve to be happy. You deserve to have amazing things happen for you and to lift that from your shoulders. I want that for you so badly. I hope that you'll give us a try. And while you're at it, I also hope that you'll make sure you're subscribed, you've liked this video, you've left a comment, and you've turned on your notifications. Why not? Listen, I love you. I mean it. And I'll talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.